Twitter. All of the presentations today will be in both official languages, and all of the speeches will be available on our website soon after the meeting in both official languages. Les présentations aujourd'hui se feront. All the presentations uh, will be in both official languages, and the speeches will be available on our website in both official languages after the meeting. For the first time, we're offering ASL and ALSQ, LSQ interpretation of APM. Micheline Parent, Chantal Léonard, Brenda Jenkins, and Judy Settle. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on traditional, unceded territory of the Algonquins nations, and also acknowledge the contributions of Indigenous people to our, to our history, our unique identity, and to the emergence of a common future. We are proud to have some extremely talented artists here with us today. Yesterday, for those of you who were here, Samuel Thomas was here to give a public talk about his Opening the Doors to Dialogue project, funded through the Canada Council's Reconciliation Initiative. And right after our meeting today, he'll be presenting one of the extraordinary beaded doors created through this project. Our meeting will also include performances by the Chris Dirksen Trio, which includes cellist Chris Dirksen, drummer Jesse Baird, and dancer Nimke Osawamik. Also on the agenda, updates and insights into the year ahead from our, our chair, Mr. Pierre Lasson, and of course, our director and CEO, Mr. Simon Bro. Les allocutions seront suivies de la... After the speeches, we'll have a question period. We've already received several questions in advance and look forward to more. Online, you can submit your questions using our hashtag. We, so as I said, we're looking forward to the questions you'll be asking us, asking here in the room. For those, those of you on uh, participating online today, you can uh, submit your questions during our hashtag uh, Council 2016 using hashtag Council 60. Nous tenterons de répondre à toutes vos questions. We will try to get to all your questions, but if we run out of time, we'll be sure to post answers on the web in the coming days. We'll do our best to answer all of your questions today, but we'll also be posting the questions and answers on our website following the meeting. And at this point, I, I have the huge pleasure of introducing. J'ai le plaisir de vous présenter Monsieur Pierre Lassonde. I have the pleasure of introducing Pierre Lassonde. He joined the Canada Council in June 2015. He's passionate about Canadian art, is an active collector, patron, and philanthropist. Pierre believes firmly that all Canadians should have access to the benefits of the arts. Mr. Pierre Lassonde. Um, thank you, Tammy, and uh, thank you to everyone here and uh, to those um, tuning in from online. Um, I'd like to welcome our guests representing the uh, Government of Canada and extend our thanks for the confidence it continues to place uh, in the Council uh, to bring the arts uh, to the lives of Canadians. Um, as many of you know, last spring, the federal government announced a historic increase in our parliamentary um, allocation, a doubling of our budget over five years. We at the Council are committed to invest this money in ways that has a real and lasting impact for all Canadians. This year, uh, citizens across the country will mark the 150th anniversary of Confederation. Um, artists and arts organizations will highlight the occasion through exceptional projects, including those funded through the Canada Council's new chapter program. Together, these projects, we, we hope, will create a tremendous cultural legacy that will spark the imagination of Canadians 
for years to come. 2017 will also mark the 60th anniversary of the Canada Council. Uh, we were born in 1957. That's just a few years before or after I did, I think. <laughs> I hate to say that. Um, there were um, only a handful of arts uh, organization uh, back in uh, those days, and they were concentrated in a very, very few urban centers, mostly Montreal. <laughs> um, fast forward to last year when, uh, with the help of uh, the council funding, uh, some 2,200 organization and over 2,000 artists distributed in over 1,900 communities across Canada, large and small, uh, increase, um, uh, receive uh, funding from the Canada Council. And now with our increased budget, uh, we can make more strategic investments to grow the arts ecosystem even more. Uh, Simon Bro, uh, the uh, uh, CEO, will speak to you in more detail about this in his remarks. But for the Canada Council, celebrating an anniversary is more than just an, expert, a, a, an exercise in nostalgia. It's an opportunity to look ahead and continually strive to have more impact. Um, I always say to the Council and to uh, the um, uh, executive, how do we touch 36 million Canadians? Because that's what all is all about is to make sure that it goes into the lives of all Canadians. And the other way around, we have 36 million artists in Canada, and how do we make sure that everyone, you know, can ex, uh, s'exprimer, sorry. Um, and now I turn to French. Au cours de la dernière année, le Conseil a... In the past year, the organization redesigned its funding model. It created uh, six national non-disciplinary programs. It also restructured itself accordingly, and it modernized its systems with a new granting portal and website as well. Such times of transition call for a strong board. So I'd like to thank my five uh, fellow board members for generously contributing their expertise, specifically in terms of strategy and risk oversight. As you see, there are some vacant seats on the board. Uh, these seats will be filled through the Government of Canada's new self-nomination process. Uh, we welcome this more transparent process and we're confident that our board will continue to be as strong and diverse as ever. As you know, the board was chosen as a finalist for the Award of Excellence for Governance Professionals of Canada. This was formerly known as the Society of Corporate Secretaries specifically in the category of best engagement from a governance team. This is one of the many ways that the Council is walking the talk in scaling up our impact and the impact of the arts on Canadian society. I'd like to highlight a few other concrete examples of how we're working with others beyond the arts to maximize our funding and also to bring the arts to the forefront of issues that make a difference in the lives of Canadians. First, uh, an anecdote which is very close to my own heart. Last November, the UNESCO Chair on the Diversity of Cultural Expressions was launched. You may be aware that the Canadian Commission for UNESCO, a network of networks dedicated to equity, sustainability and peace, is part of the Canada Council. The launch took place at the new pavilion of the Musée des Beaux-Arts du Québec, a construction that I was proud to sponsor through my philanthropic, philanthropic work. So 
So as I said, it's an ideal. I was very proud to be able to sponsor it through my philanthropic work, as I've just said. The occasion, a, celebra a celebration rather, of diversity and cultural rights, surrounded by Inuit artwork in a public space, was the perfect expression of the role of art in public life. I think that speaks volumes. One of the big milestones of 2016 was, of course, the release of the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee on the enduring tragedy of residential schools. And as we know, the impact is still being felt today. Even before this, the Council had launched its Reconciliation Initiative, which aims to create, through the arts, dialogue between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. Following this meeting, we will have the honour of receiving a very powerful and evocative artwork by Samuel Thomas, created through this initiative. Recently, we announced a set of new projects funded through this initiative, made possible with the collaboration of foundation partners. And I'd like to name them now. The J.W. McConnell Family Foundation and the Circle on Philanthropy and Aboriginal Peoples in Canada. As a direct link to a major development in Canadian life. About this time last year, Communities across the country were welcoming the first wave of refugees from Syria. And as part of the, federal's, uh, the federal government's commitment to bring more than 25,000 refugees to Canada. In response to that, the Council created with Sun Life Financial our Welcome to the Arts initiative. Through this, we funded over 40 organizations across the country to give Syrian refugees access to the best in Canadian arts. It's a nice welcome for people that have had such troubled lives to be able to come and, you know, see what Canadian culture is all about. Before the meeting started, you may have seen some of the photos from these activities. I commend the arts community for its enthusiasm in embracing this initiative. And I thank my fellow board member, Isabelle Hudon, for her leadership in uh, spearheading it. I'll close in mentioning the Jeu de la Francophonie. The Council worked with the Department of Canadian Heritage once again to assemble Team Canada in the cultural component of these Olympic-style games. Les Jeux will take place this year in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. And for the first time ever, the International Selection Committee chose young Canadian artists to compete in all the artistic disciplines. It speaks to the quality of their work, and I know that they will make us all very, very proud. 2017 will be an incredible year for the arts, and the connections and engagement and inspiration generated from these exciting projects will be felt by citizens in communities across the country. We are committed to continuing to strengthen the impact of the arts, and we look forward to working with you all to make it happen. Um, at this time, I would like to um, introduce um, the uh, performance uh, tonight uh, that I know will excite you and will inspire us all. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome cellist Chris uh, Dirksen, drummer Jesse Baird, and dancer Nimke Osawamik. Also, ladies and gentlemen, the Chris Dirksen Trio.
the Chris Dirksen Trio. Bravo and a million thanks uh, for that performance. And many thanks to you, Chris, for bringing such brilliant performers with you. Your presence here today will continue to inspire us. In fact, although you may not even realize that, you have been uh, inspiring us quite a lot this year. For example, a few months ago, when the team working on, annual on our annual report proposed that we use a photo of you uh, for the cover with your uh, case covered of stickers in snow and in front of a graffiti wall, uh, I could not uh, resist but say immediately yes because it represents really, it talks about your music and your journey. And it's a perfect fit with so many of the aspirations and observations that are currently shaping our work at the Council. The blurring of boundaries between arts discipline, the will to invite art into the historic process of reconciliation, a commitment to diversity in all its forms, and above all, a driving, constant, original, and personal quest for excellence, a quest that speaks to your growing audience, both here and at home and around the world. This past September, I also had the chance to share the stage with you at the Prismatic Festival in Halifax. There, in Halifax, for the first time, I presented the Council's detailed plan for greater investments in the creation and sharing of Indigenous art, diversity, emerging artists, and new generation. That evening, your performance responded to my speech, in a sense, give it life and resonance. Today, in spite of your very busy schedule, you have done us the honor of breathing added soul and vitali vitality to this annual meeting. A meeting that, as Pierre mentioned, uh, marks the launch of our 60th anniversary. We want to celebrate this anniversary uh, as we pay tribute to a proud past and look ahead to our future with great anticipation and a deep sense of responsibility. To paraphrase Albert Camus, the best way to prepare for the future is give all we have to the present. La meilleure façon de préparer l'avenir, c'est de tout donner. The best way to prepare for the future is to give all we have to the present. Shape our future is precisely what we have done over the past year. And everything I speak about today was made possible by the Council's employees. Together, they brought their expertise, perspectives, intelligence, hard work to develop the new funding model that will be launched this spring. This will lead to an historic and lasting reinvestment in the creation, nurturing, sharing, and outreach of the arts and literature in Canada and in the world. En fait, on peut aujourd'hui affirmer que le Conseil n'est plus... Today we can affirm that the Council is no longer what it was, but it will always remain what it was created for and what it has become over the past six decades, as essential as it is respected. Let me explain. We remain committed to our mandate to support and promote the arts. What does change, however, is the application of that mandate in a society in the midst of profound transformation. To remain relevant, we have to be able to transform, persevere and maintain our course when necessary. This year marked a decisive turning point in the transformation that was announced at the beginning of my appointment as Director and CEO. We took on an ambitious and pragmatic strategic plan. We completed the six programs of our new funding model, and we launched the grant portal that will make it simpler to interact with the Council. As promised, the portal opened on December 1st, and to date close to 7,000 people have already registered in it. Numbers always fuel the imagination because they give us an idea of the scale of what's happening. The response has been strong and positive, not just for the launch of the portal, but also throughout the year for each the year for each of our initiatives. The Council has the wind in its sails. We feel it, others tell us they feel it, and we live it on a daily basis. Naturally, the announcement of the progressive doubling of our budget over five years in last March's federal budget accelerated our operations, both inter internally and in terms of national and international outreach. In April, we published our new strategic plan. 
the design of our new funding model was well underway and we were ready to plan how we would invest these additional dollars in order to meet structuring measurable goals for the future of the arts and for the benefit of all Canadians. Let's take a minute to look at these investments. In 2016, the federal government announced an unprecedented investment in arts and culture. For us, that meant the progressive doubling of our budget over five years. Now, more than ever, the arts act as a powerful driving force across all sectors of society, opening the door to a renaissance of the arts. We don't take this responsibility lightly. As we've done for 60 years, we'll continue to support creators and foster outstanding artistic creation. We're committed to giving you, the public, access to it in your communities, neighborhoods, and cities. And for that, we have a vision. We have a strategy. Here's how we're allocating the money. First, we'll increase our support of artists, groups, and organizations. Second, we plan to amplify the quality, scale, and sharing of art by making sound investments in digital. Third, we're committed to renewing the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous artists and audiences by investing in Indigenous creation in all its forms. Finally, we intend to expand the impact of homegrown art and artists by enhancing their presence and profile abroad. Our plan sets out a vision for the future of an art sector that sees increases in support, access, youth engagement, diversity, capacity, and equity. We need the cohesive power of the arts. We need its creativity, its empathy, its capacity to help us imagine a better future. A future where art is each and every one of us, together. We recently saw how eager and ambitious the arts community is to rise to the occasion with tremendous uptake on our new chapter program created to mark the 150th anniversary of Confederation. As you can imagine, we had to act quickly to design this program since the federal budget was at the end of March last year and we wanted to start to invest the money in 2016-17 few days after. So we decided to create an ad hoc program that would, not, that would only fund arts projects that were exceptional in nature, both for their creators and the public. On April 1, 2017, the funds devoted to this special program, 40 million, will once again become more broadly available so the council can begin investing permanently in its six new programs and the strategic fund of the arts in a digital world. The community response to the new chapter was extraordinary. It took our breath away. The proposals we received totaled more than $440 million. To give you an idea of what it represents, it is more than all the projects funded by the Canada Council over the last eight years. We received 2,225 applications, 50, 50, 150, 50, 152 of them in the first competition, where we attributed around 25% of the total uh, budget for grants of 33.4 million. 52 projects will receive grants ranging from $50,000 to $375,000 following the evaluations of peer assessment committees. This represents a success rate of barely 
which is much lower than usual. We believe this situation should remain exceptional since our budget envelope will gradually increase until it will be doubled in 2021, and the volume of application will also be spread over time. You will be hearing a lot uh, of talk about the new chapter and the funded projects uh, begin, as they begin to take shape. We will collaborate closely with the artists and arts organizations selected so that we can share their work with Canadians. In fact, we could not resist the temptation to contact some of the first recipients of these new grants so that they could share their initial reactions with you. Since these were recorded live with telephones, we haven't had the time to translate them, but there's a mixture of French and English here, and I just want to show you uh, that. It's one minute. Just really uh, in a shock mode right now because uh, there's so many layers to this, as you know, and uh, the family, of course, uh, lineal background, uh, ancestors, future generations, but uh, in particular, Marcus Alfred, who you know, uh, is a big part of uh, that whole framework, but uh, losing him and his eagerness to fulfill this mission is so powerful. Uh, and then in, this, uh, in some way it becomes a commemoration to Marcus as well, as the uh, blood, lineal bloodline of uh, Moses. So it means a lot. It's going to be have an impact on the far reaching and uh, uplifting for everybody. So I'm so grateful, Natisha, for your help to uh, get the work done, and uh, we'll do the best we can. Kayla Kessler. Kayla Kessler. We are so content. We are so excited. Merci mille fois au Conseil des Arts du Canada au nom de toute l'équipe de création d'EF 2050 et au nom de l'équipe de Valérie Corps Secret. On va vivre quelques années de création tout à fait hors normes, fabuleuses, qui n'auraient jamais été possibles sans un programme comme nouveau chapitre. Quelle merveilleuse initiative. Mille fois merci encore. On est tellement heureux. It's Lawrence Cherney, standing in front of National Sawdust in Brooklyn, New York. We're so excited to be able to proceed with the production of Claude Vivier's Musique Fer das Ende. Claude would have turned 68 this spring, and we're so proud and excited to be able to bring to life an early work of his that has never been staged before. We really hope to contribute to his legacy and to building the legacy of Canadian music. C'est pour vous parler du projet des planètes, une composition de Walter Boudreau, une interprétation de Louise Bessette. Dans le cadre du projet, je vais concevoir un orgue à lumière, c'est-à-dire que je vais synchroniser la composition musicale de Walter avec des formes tridimensionnelles qui seront affichées dans l'espace d'un planétarium. Pour moi, il s'agit d'une première dans la mesure où, euh, depuis que les planétariums se sont équipés de systèmes numériques, ils sont à la, à la recherche de nouvelles expériences. Donc, euh, pour ma part, il s'agit vraiment de concevoir euh, littéralement un spectacle euh, qui est à la fois un concert, mais aussi euh, une, une expérience audiovisuelle immersive euh, sur le thème de notre place dans le cosmos en relation avec l'art des modernes et toute la tradition des orgues à couleurs. Merci. These projects uh, unfold throughout Canada and the world. In about three months, we will be announcing the results of the second and final competition on the new chapter. Speaking about the future, I want to talk about one of the four major commitments of our strategic plan, supporting the arts in a digital world. 
as you saw earlier in the investments video, the Council plans to invest $88.5 million directly into the arts sector over five years. This will significantly increase the scope, sharing and outreach of artistic creation through digital technologies. Digital technologies are now at centre stage in Canada and around the world. The consultations on Canadian content in a digital world, led by Minister Mélanie Joly, have created a lot of buzz and ignited hopes, debates and huge expectations. Obviously, while preserving its independence, the Council will make sure it is acting in sync and in synergy with Canadian heritage and the other federal, provincial and local agencies that intervene on the digital front in economic or industrial strategies, targeted plans, regional initiatives and initiatives linked to smart cities. We will also take into account the disparities of scale and resources that are very much part of the reality in Canada. The Council recognises that the arts sector in Canada has, benefit, has not benefited from any specific, significant or sustained investments to help it adapt and tra transition to our digital reality. We must take action now to ensure that art is not drowned in a flood of conveniently formatted information and cultural content. It's often said that since 2010, humanity now produces as much information in two days as it did since the invention of writing 5,300 years ago. We must take action now so that art and arts organizations can continue to access that prize, that prize whose value is increasing exponentially in the digital age, the attention and engagement of audiences. We have to take action because we're witnessing the breakdown of the funding models of cultural industries. We're seeing the growing poverty of creators, the marginalization, even the elimination of intermediaries. The competition is greater than ever to capture audiences whose habits of cultural consumption dictate the supply of content. At the same time, we're witnessing remarkable breakthroughs that allow artists and their work to reach audiences who used to be inaccessible. New opportunities to build communities of engagement that range from extremely local to extremely global. Digital technology is fascinating and frightening, as much for its boundless potential for communication and sharing as for the disillusionment caused by giant corporations that seek to control it. It throws everything we're familiar with into question. Digital technology modifies and remodels the way we live, work, create and consume. It affects our social and human interactions, our access to information, dissemination, education and values. However, what we do know <coughs> from the studies and surveys we've consulted and commissioned is that Canada's art sector is struggling to claim its place in digital society because it lacks the knowledge, the expertise, the resources and an adequate transformation of its organizational models and working methods as well. That's why our approach to supporting arts in the digital world uh, aims to do the following. One, to support arts professionals so they can better understand the challenges, issues and opportunities in digital society, develop and enrich a strategic digital philosophy and increase their ability to translate it into useful and effective actions. Two, to increase the sharing of artistic and literary creation and access to works, enhance the quality of users' artistic experience and broaden the participation and cultural engagement of Canadian citizens. And finally, our approach aims to support the transformation of arts organizations and their operational methods so that they are in a better position to meet the challenges and seize the opportunities of development and growth offered by digital technologies. This fall, uh, we plan to begin funding concrete projects. Uh, the Digital Fund is a fund which is there to allow organizations to fall, transition to We plan to, to begin funding concrete projects that will have significant results for a sector, a region, or a network of organizations. But before we start, we want to do a final validation of our hypothesis. 
calibrate our forecasts and fine tune the details of the strategic fund for the arts in a digital world. We don't want to miss our mark. So that's why this March we'll hold in Montreal a national summit on the arts and digital world. And in keeping with digital thinking, this summit will be anything but conventional, believe me. What we have in mind is an enormous workshop that will bring together more than 250 people selected and invited by the council the way we do usually for peer committees to represent the plurality of disciplines and arts practices, the variety of organizational models and scales, and the diversity and regional distribution of community. At least one quarter of the participants to that summit will be digital natives. Digital philosophers and experts in digital technologies will be on hand to contribute to various workshops and develop concrete approaches for innovative projects that could be supported by our fund for the arts in a digital world. Naturally, we will disseminate and share the outcomes of this summit live and offline so that as many as possible can benefit from them. This will be followed by a national tour this fall to explain the fund in more details and to invite submissions. Évidemment, le Conseil des Arts doit lui-même prêcher par l'exemple. Aussi, nous voulons poursuivre notre propre transformation en mettant en pratique les cinq caractéristiques fondamentales de la culture numérique qui sont l'ouverture et le partage, le fait d'être centré sur les besoins et l'expérience des utilisateurs, des citoyens, la co-création, la simplicité et l'extrême agilité. La culture numérique procède, procède par essai, idéalement à échelle réduite, et accepte que les erreurs, idéalement à l'échelle réduite, soient repérées par les utilisateurs, suscitent des réactions et des rétroactions et de la correction comme partie intégrante du processus de design. La culture numérique est d'abord une affaire de transformation des relations entre les êtres humains et ensuite une question de choix technologique. C'est aussi une culture d'acceptation du risque, des erreurs, des imperfections qui sont inévitables dans tout processus itératif. Le Conseil s'engage donc à accompagner le secteur et il s'engage aussi à continuer d'apprendre, d'expérimenter, d'innover et de grandir avec le secteur et en constante interaction avec les citoyens. Le numérique est un défi qui nous unit et les succès ne sont possibles que dans un esprit de coopération et de leadership partagé. C'est cet esprit de leadership partagé qui nous anime en ce début de 60e anniversaire. La suite des choses s'annonce passionnante. Merci d'être là. Merci, Simon. Thanks very much, Simon. For about the next 20 minutes, I'm sorry, we started a little bit late, um, so depending on our time. Je vous invite maintenant à poser vos questions. We'll now take your questions. Please come up to one of the mics so that everyone who's following us on the live webcast can hear your question. And note that we can't speak to specific files and applications due to confidentiality reasons, so we would ask that you please keep your questions more general. N'oubliez pas également que vous pouvez nous faire... Don't forget, you can also send us your questions via Twitter, Facebook, or by email. Yes. Uh, I have a great idea. <laughs> um, I get uh, my question is uh, for the March uh, summit in Montreal. Is that still open to applications? And um, I think the funding for the digital fund was in September. Is that am I correct? Yeah, so, so for the summit, the way we work is uh, we already invited 250 people, but we have a waiting list. And the reason why we did not open it was obviously because we, are, we have a limited capacity, and the big challenge for us was to make sure that from the outside, anyone from the community could say, oh gosh, I wish I would have been there, but at least I can admit that it really represents what the community is. 
So we kind of needed to gauge, you know, the number of people re representing discipline, different organizations, regions, diversity. I mean everything to make sure that we have Canada in the room. So uh, the answer is no, it's, uh, it's an invitation, but also if you want to register, we have a waiting list. So if some people cannot come, we'll select and we'll follow the pattern. So we look at, again, you know, all the different criteria. And in terms of the fund, uh, yes, the expectation is to uh, launch the fund uh, next fall and receive the first uh, applications and the three components of the fund uh, starting next September. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I'm just wondering, uh, are you guys planning any like uh, information sessions on the tax implications of receiving grants? Uh, we are not planning specific sessions, but uh, when there are questions related to that, uh, you know, ask at the council, you know, directly online on phone and all of that, we'll answer that. Uh, normally, I mean, these are grants, so they are not kind of uh, investments or uh, contributions and all that. They are grants, so they follow uh, uh, into the rule of, uh, of taxations related to grants. But if you have any question, we, we can answer to that. Okay, like, can you like direct me to somebody I guess is there a department or something like that yeah if you if you call at the Canadian Council and say I have a uh, question about you know uh, <laughs> finance and grants <laughs> just behind you is uh, our expert in finance Carol <laughs> she will answer your question <laughs> I'm Victoria Steele I am the director general uh, Ottawa Arts Council I'd like to congratulate for the work you're doing. The Canada Council has done some extraordinary work, and your your initiatives are fantastic as well. I noticed here as artists in the Ottawa region um, that we share with other regions that are not dans les grands centres. And the Community Foundation of Ottawa just released information before Christmas on its new Ottawa Insights platform, thanks to the Canada Council's open data. Merci beaucoup pour tous les renseignements. And we noticed, again, how much arts organizations and artists who are not dans les grands centres de Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, they are not funded anywhere on the level per capita basis equity. Um, and of course, we know the Canada Council funds based on creativity and excellence and so on, um, but we're in a bit of a catch-22 here. It's very hard for artists in this region and other regions to make a living here, so they move to Montreal, Vancouver, Toronto. This is not new. This is c'est la réalité du Canada, n'est-ce pas? Yep. So that's the reality we face in Canada. Oh, they're fresh, and I'm happy to share them with you if people are interested. Uh, I just wonder where the council's at in terms of looking at some of these really important regional issues. And I have to say, my board of directors has asked me to make sure I ask this question. No, Merci it's, it's, beaucoup. Yeah, thank you. It, it's a good question. First of all, I want to say that it's really important when, when you play with data because, as you know, we are committed to uh, to open data, so we released everything and people can play with those data and come with a lot of different conclusions uh, depending on, you know, how big you, uh, uh, how, what is your defini exact definition of the region, what are your benchmarks, and, um, so, so we can I mean, you, you can use data and make them talk a lot and make arguments. Uh, in terms of the level of granting and per capita and all of that, again, it's also a question of compar comparing, you know. I'm not sure that we are that low Canada Council in the Ottawa region if we compare us to other regions of the country. But one thing I'm certain of... We can give it, you the figures. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, we can give you other figures. We have many, many of those figures. But, but it's still a big discussion. Every, everywhere I go in Canada, you can imagine, everywhere I go, people complain because, you know, dance is not that supported in one region compared to Montreal or compared to... An, so this question of regional distribution 
is a real obsession at the Canada Council. We are, obs we are obsessed with it because we, we know that artists are debating it and discussing it. The only issue we have constantly is that decisions are made according to qualitative assessments made by juries. I don't make those decisions and my colleagues don't either. We follow the results of the peer assessment. At the same time, we are very aware that there are, for many different regions, there are many issues related to equity, to diversity, to indigenous, to regions, and all of that. And we try to kind of to come with uh, a mechanism in order to try to make sure that they are not that abrupt. It's very difficult because Canada Council is the federal funder. And our action is also very much influenced by the actions of local funders, of provincial funders, because the way it works is the more there is public and private investment, when there is more public investment and private investment, everybody raises. So if a province decides that they will invest a lot, for instance, for international touring, it's clear that the artists of that province will perform better when they be, they will be at the federal level than if you are coming from a province where there's no investment for international. So it's kind of a, it's a complex uh, situation. There is no uh, way to fix it easily because it's an ecosystem. And one of the big preoccupation I have right now as the CEO of the Canada Council, and one of my biggest fear is that in some regions, we see, uh, you know, funders backtracking because supposedly we have more money. And that would be a zero-sum game. So what we try to do now, the council, is to is really to engage in conversations with all the level of funders, making sure that we all cooperate to support a better ecology. So there's no there's, there's not one solution, and there is not one set of data. Uh, that would be conclusive to say, okay, we will put the money there. The other thing I want to say is that there's something new in the landscape of the Canada Council right now, and that's the digital fund. That fund will not be tied to artistic excellence. It won't be, because it's not about creating digital art. It's about helping the sector to transition to digital. So there's a major infusion of money there that will represent in 2021 10% of everything, everything we invest and the decisions of investing from that fund will be absolutely related to innovation. And on this field of innovation, it could come from anywhere in Canada, any region. And in a sense, it's a little disconnected from every all the other criteria we are using. So a long answer, it's a, it's a constant preoccupation, but there's no way that the Canada Council will take the road of distributing its fund evenly across the regions in Canada. That would be the end of the art sector as we know it. Merci, nous comprenons que c'est complexe. Thank okay. you very Merci much, and I look forward to seeing We know it's complex. Yeah. Absolutely. I would just uh, suggest at this time that we take some questions from online um, that were submitted online. My colleagues Lolita and Meredith are at the back of the room and they will, <laughs> Meredith will be kicking it off with a question. Lolita will be kicking it off with a question submitted online. Oui, en fait, c'est une question analogue. C'est une question que les, les agents de programme ont entendue souvent. C'est surtout basé sur le fait qu'on va avoir des nouveaux fonds. Alors, les gens se demandent si on va ajouter des dates limites pour les concours dans la prochaine année financière. Et comment ça va fonctionner, les dates limites? Bon, d'abord, deux, deux choses. Le nouveau modèle de financement, euh, ça va débuter en avril prochain. Ça ne va pas être tous les programmes et toutes les composantes de tous les programmes qui vont ouvrir en même temps, parce qu'il y a des enjeux. Il faut comprendre que le Conseil des arts du Canada connaît un doublement de son budget, mais réparti sur cinq ans. Donc, tous les, euh, les niveaux de financement vont varier, ça va être progressif. Il y a des endroits où ça va aller plus vite. Par exemple, je l'ai déjà dit publiquement, on a l'intention d'être beaucoup plus agressif dans nos investissements pour les arts autochtones. On va commencer à faire ces investissements-là de façon très importante dès la première année du nouveau modèle de financement. Puis, il y a d'autres composantes du programme, comme par exemple la coproduction internationale, où on va commencer à investir plus dans deux ou trois ans, parce qu'on sait que le niveau de demande n'est pas si fort que ça. 
ça. Donc, ça va être progressif. Et les dates limites, on a déjà, si vous allez sur le site web, vous allez voir déjà qu'on a prévu un nombre minimal de dates limites par programme. Et comme j'ai dit tantôt, on veut être dans la pensée numérique. Donc, on va s'ajuster constamment selon la demande qu'on reçoit. Il y a des programmes pour lesquels il n'y aura pas de date limite. On l'a déjà annoncé. Et, 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 et là, c'est quand les gens sont prêts, quand ils sont prêts à faire le voyage, saisir l'opportunité. Puis il y a d'autres programmes pour lesquels, évidemment, il y a des dates limites, comme par exemple pour les organismes euh, qui reçoivent des, des subventions de base parce qu'on doit pr pr procéder à l'évaluation de tous les organismes. Donc, ça prend des dates limites. Donc, euh, encore une fois, il faut suivre tout ça. On essaie de communiquer ça très, très clairement dans le portail et sur le site Web. Puis si vous n'avez pas trouvé la question, votre réponse, écrivez-nous ou appelez-nous, je vous donne une réponse C'est un processus en évolution. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions dans la salle? Any further questions from the audience? My question actually is, in your... Sorry. Okay. You're fine? My question is in regards to emerging artists. Um, in the sort of recent decade, uh, it's become very, very risk adverse uh, culturally in funding. And um, young artists, uh, older artists, all artists uh, need to begin. So it becomes sort of a chicken and an egg problem. And almost uh, in every single, um, whether provincially, whether regionally, however you look at it, no one's kind of prepared right now uh, to take a risk. Um, so I just wanted to kind of raise that because I think it's really important uh, as a country for our future um, if to give people a break, you know, and somebody has yeah, to sort of I step it up and step it out, apart from the digital space, which you've already identified. Yeah. I Thank absolutely you. agree, actually, and uh, uh, in my previous life, I've been uh, running a theater school for years, so it's something that we are very aware. The Canada Council is making a huge, very bold commitment, and that commitment is that 25% of the new money we're getting, which is roughly half a billion dollars, needs to go to first-time applicants to the Canada Council. This is really, really bold. That did not happen for years and years, that new money and significant money goes to uh, first-time applicants. So it could be individuals and obviously organizations who never received you know, core funding for the Canada, from the Canada Council. And in order to meet that target, because it's not an easy target to meet, believe me, because when we look at our numbers over the past uh, years, we realize that the number of first-time applicants and the amount of money spent and for first-time applicants is quite low. So because we made that commitment and because we are also exploring new territories, paying attention to make sure that uh, emerging artists feel invited, that uh, they feel that they have a voice, that uh, they are heard, and doing workshops and doing preparatory work and all of that is very much on our agenda now. Because we want to deliver that commitment and we'll deliver it. So it's a, it will represent a big shift in, the, in the, the artistic landscape of this country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Perhaps we can take another question from submitted online. Meredith? Hi, thanks. We actually have an email question from Jasmine Fenn, which is a great follow-up to what you were just talking about. Uh, Jasmine says, many young graduates and older millennials with arts degrees are finding it more and more difficult and competitive to secure entry-level full-time positions with cultural institutions. What would you suggest that young artist professionals can do to stand out in the application pile? And is there anything that cultural institutions in Canada can do to create more full-time positions in the cultural sector? Okay, I, I don't know about full-time positions. I don't know if that uh, concept, uh, except if you work in the public service, I discovered over, over the last two and a half years, that this concept is that, you know, promising anymore for the future. But what I know is that the fact that the Canada Council is putting such a focus right now on emerging artists, on youth, on indigenous, 
on digital, I mean, this very fact, the fact, as I said, you know, we're doing a summit and we want 25% of millennials. I do that also in the way we do casting inside the council right now. The fact that we're putting that focus is also a huge incentive for major organizations to them pay attention to it. Because the question when we evaluate and assess them, we ask them, so what do you do for diversity? What do you do for indigenous? What do you, I mean, concretely, and, and in this country, those questions of diversity, indigenous, and youth are absolutely interlinked. So my hope is that we will see more uh, openings. And also, we have a very unique situation in Canada. Because of the demography of our country, there is a change of the guard happening in many, many organizations right now in Canada. And it's also something we're paying attention to. Uh, and it's something for the first time, this question of transition uh, in, in terms of artistic directions in artistic organizations in Canada, it's something we are paying attention to for the first time at the Canada Council. We, it's not a given when an organization uh, loses its leader because they, they retire or, or anything else. Uh, the transition is something we will want to, uh, to follow to make sure that it's done in a way that serves uh, both the organizations, the art form and the art sector. So in a nutshell, I must say that it's very much on our mind right now, these questions of, uh, of youth, these questions of renewal of the art sector, these questions of uh, immediate future, and, and everything that we are uh, discussing right now should lead to more opening uh, for, for youth. If five years from now, I would not see a change in the demographic of the arts institutions, I would be really worried, and I think it would be a failure for us. Are there any questions from the audience, or do we go to another question submitted online? Online question. Okay, great. We have a Twitter question from at Kamozi Ann, uh, who tweeted us at hashtag Council60. And she also so it sent would be a shorter question. Yes. <laughs> um, she uh, also sent us an email. So, uh, hello, Anne. Anne asks, what is Canada Council doing to help disabled artists who spend money other artists don't for studio assistance in order to create? She says, how can a disabled artist live if they require help in order to create? I, I, it's a it's a, it's a good question, relevant question. I don't think, to my knowledge, right now, that we are at the council at the point of offering something specific for your work in the studio. I know we have many different uh, uh, measures to help the artists to apply, to do, to do the assessment, to do that, but to be to to give help directly in the studio during the creative process, we're not there at this point. It's something we should explore and uh, let's explore it. Lolita, est-ce que tu aurais une autre question? Lolita, do you have another question from online? Yes, we have um, many questions asking for clarification on the objective of uh, the digital summit. So once again, the importance of this fund well, in the new funding model, uh, most of the uh, council's budget will be invested in new programs. We're recognizing as a new discipline, digital creation. We recognize also that in terms of developing creation in general, digital technologies are becoming more and more important. What we're seeing at the same time uh, through our exhaustive uh, survey uh, of uh, the digital community, well, in general, the arts sector in terms of its use of digital technologies, uh, well, generally, they're still stuck at use, stuck on using uh, traditional type technologies, email, for example, you know, met big, big data, virtual reality, enhanced reality, uh, artificial intel intelligence, algorithms, all that, all that, <coughs> in uh, the use of social media, uh, Etc. For most uh, artistic organizations in Canada, this is uncharted 
territory. So the idea of the digital fund really is uh, to boost that transition and to give uh, the arts uh, community uh, better resources uh, to integrate digital technology because uh, citizens, uh, citizens, uh, well, they have expectations, and their expectations are post-analog. They're digital expectations. So at the Arts Council, we're not saying that all artists must uh, undo digital creation. A dancer is a dancer. A sculptor is a sculptor. No problem. That will remain the case. But in terms of uh, uh, the increasing access to uh, their works and accessing interna international markets. Digital can do a lot for these artists, and we want to develop that. We want a digital, uh, digital intelligence. We want to develop digital solutions, and we want to help organizations uh, that are still uh, using 70s, 80s style models to transform. They need to transform. We're going to help them do that. That's what this fund is designed to do, and the idea of the summit really is uh, to really develop uh, projects that will be funded by that fund. <coughs> or is there other questions that have been submitted, Meredith? Yes, we have an email question from Pierre. Uh, Pierre has asked, apart from funding Canadian art and artists directly. Uh, can you talk about how you will raise the profile of Canadian art internationally? Yeah, it's a good it's a question. Good question. Thank you for the question. Yes, you're right. The Canada Council, uh, and, and it's true for international, but every aspect of, of our work, we feel that our f biggest responsibility, our biggest way of, uh, of acting is through funding. But there's also a work that needs to be done in order to open doors, to build networks, to work with other governments, our local partners, to really offer platforms for artists to present their work internationally. Uh, so the Canada Council, for instance, will work on you know uh, uh, making sure that they are the delegations going uh, abroad. It will be present in fairs, will be present in Biennale, will be present to make sure that there is a, a there is, that they, there is a development of networks that is helping the artists to present their work. So it's very much, uh, we, 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 we really think that the Canada Council needs to have the expertise, needs to know what is the state and what are the possibilities of different markets all around the world, and needs to be active and, and proactive to make sure that the artists are not sent abroad only with, uh, you know, their grant and no other support. And one way of doing that for us more and more is to work with other partners like Canadian Heritage and Global Affairs, local embassies, other international partners. And we're developing right now many agreements with many different countries, and we'll make that uh, all that very public to make sure that uh, uh, Canada becomes a, an important player in terms of presenting the arts uh, around the world. So it's really a company a financier. Alors merci à tous nos Well, thanks to all our presenters. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Chris Dirksen, Jesse Baird, and Nip. Nimki Asawamik uh, for their excellent performance. I think that was the best part of our meeting this afternoon. I'd like to thank all of you who have uh, taken part in person. Followed us online. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, all the speeches will be available on a website just after the meeting. Shared online shortly after the meeting. Si y a des questions auxquelles on n'a pas pu répondre. Now, if there are any questions that we haven't had time to address today, they will be answered online in the coming days. Question of our event. Thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. Merci beaucoup de vous être joint de vous être joint à nous. Je suis sur mes mots. Thanks for being with us this afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>